Thank you very much, Mr. Chen, for this inspiring talk. And now I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Anna Prodopapas, uh, who is the CEO and president of Mersana Therapeutics. Uh, Anna came from Boston just for this event. She comes from Cyprus. Uh, so this is, a, I think, a role model for uh, all our young Cypriots uh, who are uh, working now in their studies and they aspire to do something important. So thank you. Thank you. Can I close this? So thank you, Dr. Chen. Obviously, you're doing things at a much bigger scale in China, but, uh, but it's something for us to look forward to. Uh, first, I'd like to start by thanking the people who organized today. The companies we saw were really very inspiring. High quality ideas, high quality teams, and I hope this is the beginning of a very concerted effort to really spur technological innovation in this type of uh, entrepreneurship in Cyprus. So I'll start by introducing myself. I am a Cypriot. I grew up in Nicosia, although my family has roots in the north. I went to the English school, since so many people today told me they went to the English school, go English school. And I studied engineering at Princeton and MIT and business at Stanford. And I spent my career, which now spans almost 30 years, in early stage companies looking to commercialize technology. And I spent my, my role has always been at the intersection of science and business. And I've been involved in three startups. The first one, was an environmental technology company with roots at MIT. It saw a meteoric growth before it came crashing down and eventually shut down. It was a painful experience, but one with the passage of time I call a learning experience. The second company was a biotech company, one looking to leverage the information coming out of the Human Genome Project to develop drugs. Over a period of 10 years, the company saw lots of ups and downs, multiple changes in strategy, until it eventually did have a success. It brought a cancer drug to market, a very important cancer drug that is now the global standard of care for a hematological malignancy called multiple myeloma. But with that success came, uh, because of that success, the company was acquired by a large pharmaceutical company, Takeda. For several years after the acquisition, I worked for Takeda, and among my multiple responsibilities was partnerships with smaller companies and startups, as well as running the company's venture fund. So I had an opportunity to see early stage uh, company creation and technology commercialization from the perspective of a much bigger company. The third startup is the one that I'm currently running, Mersana Therapeutics. It's taking a different approach to developing cancer treatments. We've had some success in the last three years we brought two products into early clinical development, and we've raised significant amounts of money, which is what you need to do if you're going to go into clinical trials, sufficient money to allow us to take these two products through early proof of concept. But we are a long way from declaring success. Success is actually having one of these programs reach the market and do something beneficial for patients. And I know that between now and then, we'll have lots of expected and unexpected challenges. So being in a technology startup and trying to build a technology startup is often like being on a roller coaster. There are days when your experiments go well, when the patients you're treating with your experimental therapy respond, when you find a new investor, and those are very exhilarating when things go well. But there are multiple days when your experimental data is wrong, 
your manufacturing batch doesn't meet specs and you just wasted half a million dollars, where a potential customer walks away. And those really can have a very detrimental impact on the trajectory of the company. And you really have to be willing to live with those ups and downs. In the three years that I've been at Mersan, I came close to recommending that we shut down the company twice. So it's those, so if you are an aspiring entrepreneur, make sure you have a very strong conviction about the potential of your idea, because it's really that conviction that is going to sustain you on those days when things don't go well. And make sure you surround yourself with the best people you can find, because every person in a small company makes a difference. You don't know who's going to be solve your next problem. And the best chances to solve that next problem is to hire the best people. I've been fortunate to, uh, to work in, the, in Boston, one of the major uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems in the US. And we have a very rich ecosystem that really facilitates the commercialization of technology. So as we think about fostering this kind of effort in Cyprus, I think it's worth thinking about what are the key components of that ecosystem? Which ones do we have and which ones do we really need to cultivate? So I would venture to say that there are four, there are multiple components, but there are prob probably four really important ones. You need entrepreneurs who have great ideas and the passion to see them through to a product that are willing to take significant risk. You need a well-educated employee base who is willing to join these companies and really execute on the entrepreneur's vision, an employee base who can work on a global basis. You need a favorable regulatory framework, one that does not burden startups with excessive bureaucracy. And then you, add, you need access to capital and access to a network of people who can really help you commercialize that idea. So after today's session, I'm more convinced than ever before that in Cyprus we do have the entrepreneurs and they do have great technological ideas. And we do have a very well-educated workforce that can really operate on a global basis. So do we have the regulatory framework? That was a question I couldn't answer uh, before coming to this meeting, but I did hear, it was very encouraging to hear the minister's speech that there is an effort to put such a regulatory framework in place. And I should say that a specific regulation that was put in place in the US in 1980, the Buy-Dole Act, was one that facilitated the, the licensing of university technologies to create new companies, and that has been incredibly beneficial in fostering entrepreneurship. And that's why you see so much of it in the Boston and in the Bay Area, where there are leading academic institutions. And this regulation, at the end of the day, not only benefits the entrepreneurs, it benefits the university, and it benefits the economy. For example, a patent that Princeton licensed to Eli Lilly that turned out to be an important cancer drug has accrued over $500 million to the university. This is all money that goes back into research, into scholarships. Google has paid Stanford over 300 million for the algorithm that launched Google. Again, this is money that goes back into the university and helps students and professors. So I was encouraged to hear that such legislation is being considered in Cyprus, and I hope that it does pass because that would be a great facilitator for what we're trying to achieve here today. So the next thing is do we have access to capital? And I think that's probably going to be the most challenging aspect of this. As these companies we saw today, 
have success, they're going to need more and more capital, much more than what is available today through these entrepreneurial competitions. And before we can attract significant venture capital to Cyprus, we would need to establish a track record of success. So is there anything we can do to bridge that gap? And I want to give you two specific examples from my own experiences. When I was at Takeda, I was approached by the chief scientific officer of Israel, who had a concerted effort to attract investment in life sciences in Israel. His office, over a period of six months, dialogued with us, invited us to tour what was available in Israel, and in the end, brokered a deal between Takeda, another pharmaceutical company, Johnson & Johnson, and Orbi met a very large, probably the world's largest investor in healthcare. The three of us funded a 10-year incubator in Israel. Something that would not have happened if there wasn't a strategy from the chief scientific officer's uh, office and if there wasn't a concerted effort to make it happen. Since then, all three parties, I happen to know, have invested further in further uh, ventures in, in Israel. So we need to think about how we could put together a more concerted effort to attract capital and to really support the kinds of companies we saw today. The other example I would give you, and I would give credit to the MIT Enterprise Forum of Greece, to Vasilis and his team, and to uh, Marina uh, Hadzopoulos. They've done a fantastic job of really mobilizing the community in the US, the expatriate community in the US, to make connections between the startup companies and experts abroad. And we have a very successful expatriate community, both in Cyprus and Greece, people who are very willing to help, give advice, potentially put some angel funding into it. And we need to continue to pursue that. And I hope that even the business community in Cyprus, where that there is a significant wealth, would be willing to also put uh, money at risk to support these exciting technological innovations. So with that, I hope that today's meeting is really a call of action. I hope it's the beginning of a very concerted effort to make uh, Cyprus and the, company, the types of companies we saw today very successful. Thank you.